Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am... Rex. <laughs> like you finally resolved. That's what I, I made, am. I made peace with myself. 40, yeah. 42 years. It's like, fine, fine, fine. That's who I am now. I'll be Rex. Uh, this is Michael Morgan, Magnificent Bastard. Michael Morgan, you Magnificent Bastard! <laughs> This is fun. It's a Bushmills. It's the basic Bushmills. Shut up. Do you know? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I went back and looked. No, no. I know. What? We have AB compared it like three times all right, okay. to other things. We've never reviewed We this. have never done a straight up, all by itself, all right. Bushmills that I could find. And I mean, look, I've said this before and then you guys have been like, it's right here. Right. And I did Google and I Googled generically and I searched the channel. Okay. And I name searched the channel and I couldn't find anything but a reference. Like, okay. I tried this. What, how does Bushmills Black compare to Bushmills? I will assume that you are correct and drink this whiskey with you on the interwebs. Yeah. It's a minimum of three years old, it says. <laughs> Kinda has to be. Nothing but the best. Can I, you, can I say that this was my go-to Irish whiskey for a very long time? Yeah. It was J Jameson, and then for some reason, I don't remember why, I switched to Bushmills. Hmm. And then I was only Bushmills for a while. Yeah, yeah. For like years. Okay. I was like, no, Bushmills was my whiskey. Uh, at bars when I was doing well, I mean, music. You, you can get it at any bar. Yeah. yeah. It's easier to get Jameson. Maybe that's why I was like, I'm gonna do Bushmills. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little fancy. Do uh, so you have Bushmills? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can totally see you doing that with your frosted tips. Five <laughs> oh, years, grain, five-year-old grain whiskey, then blended in with malt. Okay. So right. the difference between this and the 15-year-old Irish uh, single malt that we just had. Oh, yeah. So night and day. It's a different. That's got density. The other one had density yeah. and melon and sweetness and honey. This is sweet and shiny and vanilla cream. Yeah, it's like a brittle, almost a metallic character with that sweetness. Yeah. I really feel like we should have done this in the other order. The Bushmills would have gotten a bit more love if we had switched the order, just because we're not fresh off the heels of a 15-year-old Irish. I'm always curious about random marketing word choices on things like this. Like, this is a huge brand, right? Yeah. But on the back, here's a line that is interesting to me. Our signature Irish whiskey is aged in seasoned bourbon barrels. It's just a used bourbon barrel. Yeah. Seasoned sounds better than used. Yeah. Yeah. We seasoned it with bourbon. It really makes it sound like the bourbon was like an afterthought. Yeah. It's like, ah, we got these barrels. First we, you know, seasoned them a little with bourbon. Right. But let's not talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on to the important part. Yeah, when we got them. It's just a, it's just a better sounding word. <laughs> seasoned to perfection. So you just pulled the booze out from the bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we dumped it. They sent it to us. We filled it with whiskey. Uh, That's the, fair. The vanilla on here is that really... Really oversweet, um, like grocery store vanilla cupcake icing. Yeah, I was thinking icing with a little um, silver ball, like shiny bits, yeah, yeah, yeah. sprinkles it's, it's on the top. Almost metallic in that sweetness. But it drinks simple and nice, and yeah, it's not it, fancy. It tastes better on the taste. It's not bad. It but melts better. Sure as hell, better than budget knows. Canadian. Mm. Or really, really budget blended American. The finish, you know? the finish falls off a cliff. Yeah, but those first few moments, fine. having that with a Guinness or something, fine. Like have a, a stout, yeah. and then have a shot of Bushmills. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the way you do it right there. Yeah. Well, it's if you're in this frame of mind. If you're in not exploring mode, not exploring. like the moment yeah. I go into a bar and I realize my only choices in glassware are a shot glass mm -hmm. or some sort of cocktail glass. Yeah. And, and the bar has a very limited selection. That's when I'm like, all right, just give me a shot of Jameson or give me a shot of Bushmills. Yeah, it's very simple. It disappears pretty quickly. It, but for what it is while it's there, it's fine for the level of expectation that I am at whenever I'm going into like a Bushmills, um, a Jameson, mm -hmm. what would be another thing? Powers, Powers. I, put, I put actually a notch or two above. I agree. Okay. Powers gold label, I like it better. Yeah, the John's Lane is you know actually now, just good outright. Yeah, I will tell you, no this Bushmills yeah. makes a great blending base. Okay. It holds things you saw, better uh, than Jameson. The majority of the, the, the whiskey is the Bushmills. Yeah. Oh. It holds things better than Jameson does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know, a lot of times you'll get this like kind of thin, sweet base, and then you add some character, and it just 
fractures everything apart, mm -hmm. comes apart at the seams. Yeah, yeah. But Bushmills specifically yeah. does a good job of holding additive whiskey malts. Hmm. Like you'll put sherry in there, it'll hold it. You put more bourbon cask, it'll hold it. So if you're using it to play with other things, mm -hmm. that simplicity is a good thing. Yeah. But if you're drinking it neat, mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. There's other stuff that's more interesting. But I'm glad it's better than the nose. Yeah, it tastes way better than it smells. Mm -hmm. And we were spoiled by yesterday's. We are. That's, I, that's what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to reset my expectations for this. Oh, um, letting it sit for a second brought out candy cane. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Like a peppermint? Yeah, like candy cane. Very weird. You know what, it keeps losing steps every time I go back. Yeah. It's definitely it's a, more let's simple. drink it just to have some whiskey in our blood. I would even pick Tullamore Dew. Oh. Probably before this. Really, Tullamore Dew? It'd be close. Should we compare? I'm running out of glassware. We just drink it from the bottle. I think I, yeah, I'm not doing that. Drink it from the bottle. So I'm gonna get one glass. Pour it in the cap. Oh, drink man, our Tullamore is next door. It's up there. No, that's the 15 year old. That would be a very unfair comparison. There's no younger Tillamore up there? No, there's a Phoenix, but it's got a, like a weird finish. Let's do powers. We're prepping for whiskey level one right now, and it's all of our base level comparison stuff is over there. Tom McCafferty, 5591. Are there any whiskeys out there that the distiller didn't do cuts, just bottled the whole distillate? I hope not, because you're going to have the four shots in there. Um, um, the uh, the methanol, which can, so here's the question for you. Not really great. I mean, even moonshiners are making cuts out in the woods. Yeah, go ahead. Let's let's do Jameson. Um, here's the question for you. I know of one that's not doing. <laughs> not really. Like they brag about like how much they're getting and stuff like well, that. Well, hold on. That's but they're still getting cuts. They're just going too deep into like the tails. Well, the rumor is that he wasn't making cuts. This is a story that chased Reed off and told him <laughs> they would have him arrested or shoot him if he ever came back on the property <laughs> because he was sitting at the bar and he asked some questions. <laughs> okay. That was it. Yeah. He started asking questions about the stills that he could see. Right. He's like, just curiosity. Right. Reed's a super nice guy, even though he's a nerd, he's a really nice guy. Right, right, right. And he was just asking some questions and the dude went ape <laughs> on him. And, and kicked him off the property. Get his, out of my His setup distillery. was like super proprietary or something? I don't know. But like, and a couple of other people have said the exact same thing. He's down the road from us. From here? Yeah. Is it a whiskey to see? Yeah, yeah. Don't, uh, uh, can you see me on camera? Look, man. People are going to want to know. I know. But I don't know that he's not made. This is hearsay. <laughs> Smell that. That's the Jameson. It's, after smelling that, you can see Bushmills is a little softer. It is softer, yeah. Yeah. But there is actually a little bit more flavor coming out of the nose than Jameson. It's, well, it's a little more punchy, but I don't know but if flavor is right I actually, actually like get more nose. I get more yeah. discernible notes. I don't know that I'm... A I think it bit. gets sharper. Like, I get more ethanol, but I don't know that I get more actual smelling notes. Yeah. More of a... There's a buttery quality to that Jameson. That's If not you had to pick. A sweet, buttery quality to the Jameson. If you had to pick, which one? I think I'd pick Bushmills out of those two. It's a toss up for me. I yeah. could go, yeah, absolutely. Half dozen one, six of the other. Yep, 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 yep. We have Rick.dev, people who look down on the banjo, don't know Bella Fleck. Ah, yes! Apparently this is a comment for Daniel by Daniel. Who yes. is Bella Fleck Daniel? Bella Fleck is one of the greatest banjo players he's ever lived. Mm -hmm. He's an astounding musician. Uh, and what a name, Bella Fleck. Bella Fleck. Yeah. You are obligated to, pay, to play a funky instrument like the banjo. If her name is Bella, Bella Fleck. Fleck. Right. There's a story, and I can't remember, uh, a friend of mine told me, because in Nashville, everybody has these weird musician stories. Yeah. And so he was like, I was riding from the airport to the car uh, park from an airport, I can't remember where, but like off your plane, get on that little tr bus that everyone sits on while you get taken to the, the rental tram, car tram, area or yeah. something. Yeah. And there's a guy sitting there with his case, and some dude was sitting across me, he's like, hey, what you got in the case? He's like, I have a banjo, and he's like, you, you know, play it for us? And the guy's like, I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No. And then like three other people are like, yeah, play some banjo, we got like 15 minutes, or we're stuck in traffic or something. And he's like, all right, so he opened it up, and he picked up his banjo, and he just wailed on it. Just whoa, and everyone's like, whoa! And then after they got off, uh, they all went to their cars, and my buddy went back to his car, and he was like, I want to Google, and he was like, son of a bitch! <laughs> That's Bella Fleck. <laughs> Just played yeah, banjo yeah, yeah. in an airplane trolley. Everybody got a, everybody got a private show. We got a 15-minute private concert from Bella Fleck. That's awesome. That's pretty amazing. All right. 
this is not amazing, but it's not bad. Yeah. If you're on that frame of mind and a little background, simple sipping thing there. All right, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your liver, sorry. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.